we are today. All right. Let's skip topics and uh, and talk about uh, Charlie God. Uh, you know, I don't know how many of you are following this, but this is a story of the baby uh, of of the the young boy in uh, in England who has a very rare, very very I think there are only sixteen cases ever of this disease, uh, genetic disorder that is basically uh, incapacitating uh, his, his, his brain. It, it goes to the brain and it makes it impossible for the brain uh, to, to properly grow. It's called mitochondrial depletion syndrome. Mitochondrial is a, is a, is a genetic, genetic material. Um, here's how it describes his situation. He can't breathe without a ventilator, move, he's deaf, he has severe epilepsy, um, and they are saying, again, the doctors at least are saying that he has severe brain damage. Now, the parents, now he's in this uh, British hospital. Uh, all of his treatment is being paid by uh, the British Health Services because they have socialized medicine. And a decision has to be made. At, at what point do you disconnect this child from the ventilator and, and let him die? I, I mean, there's no life here for him. He's got severe brain damage. He can't breathe without the ventilator. Who wants to live that way? Why would anybody want to live that way? And, and of course, who's paying for it? Now, it's socialized medicine. So who gets to make that decision under socialized medicine? The hospital gets to make that decision, or court, in this case, gets to make this decision. Now, the parents, the parents don't want the child disconnected, and the parents have latched onto the idea that there's this experimental medication treatment in the United States, and they want to take the child and move him to the United States to experience this, this uh, experiment. Um, and they've actually raised the money to do it. Now, in a free market, in a completely free market, yeah, the, the, the parents would have a complete decision about what to do here. And they would decide where to take the child as long as they're paying for it. I don't think insurance companies would be willing to keep the child on the ventilator and ship him to the United States for a treatment that is probably 90% plus not going to do any good. And even if it does good, it's not going to repair the brain damage the child already has. So we'll get to the moral question of whether should one even try to save this child. But it would be, it's the, it's the parent's responsibility. It's, it's their child like it or not, they would go through the motions, they would pay for it, they would do whatever is necessary. One of the great evils of socialized medicine is, it's not, not your decision, it's not the parent's decision, it's not even the insurance company's decision, it's the government's decision, it's a court's decision. Now, what does a court got to do with this? What the court has to decide, how to use public money, government money whether to keep some people alive or other people not, because if you kept everybody alive all the time, the social system would run out of money, right? Would run out of money. So socialized medicine is a disaster. This isn't a good case to illustrate it, though. This kid is dead. This kid, in my view, should be allowed to die. Keeping him alive is an abomination. And at the same time, millions of people, millions of people are being harmed by socialized medicine. Millions of people are standing in lines to receive MRI or any kind of treatment. Thousands of people are not being treated with the most effective treatment for cancer or heart disease because there's not enough money in the budget and they can't pay for it themselves. The injustices committed daily on healthy adults are constant. And nobody cares. This is the great mystery, right? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the thousands of people dying because of socialized medicine. Nobody cares about the fact that thousands or millions globally of people are not getting the best cancer and heart disease treatment because of socialized medicine. Nobody cares that people die in line waiting for the MRI. But you take one child with severe brain damage, and parents who are going to do anything in their power to keep him alive. And suddenly everybody cares. People are flying to England to demonstrate. To demonstrate. Why? Why is this the case that is galvanizing us? Arguably, 
if you cared about the child, you would argue for them disconnecting him, letting him die. You can't say that about adults. You can't say that about healthy people who are just waiting for an MRI or somebody who's got the beginning of cancer and not going to get the right treatment. That's the real evil. It's because of the altruism in our culture. It's because the more, the more somebody is suffering, the more we got to care. The more somebody is closer to death, the more we got to care. The more they're damaged, brain damage in this case, the more we have to care. But that's upside down. I mean, you know, I feel horrible for this kid. I feel horrible for parents. As a parent myself, I can't imagine what they're going through. But the fact is, this kid will never have a life. This kid, no matter what the treatment does, will never have the parts of his brain that have not grown properly. Those won't come back. It's true. The court system shouldn't be deciding this. But this isn't the case on which to fight socialized medicine. This isn't the case on which to take a stand. Because I think the parents are wrong here. I think the parents should allow the hospital to let the child die. And it's only this awful, awful sense of, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is about us that, that, that well, I do know, it's this, it's this awful morality that we all live under. The, the, the worse off somebody is, the more we want to jump to his defense. And note, note, that President, Ob- President uh, uh, Trump has come in on this issue. And the Pope, the Pope you'd expect it, has come in on this issue. Keep the kid alive. Keep the kid alive. Bring him to the United States. Congress has given the parents temporary residency in the United States so they can bring him without going through the visa process. Why? There are thousands, millions of people who would love to come to the United States to get health treatment. People who could actually live a, 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 a good life if they got that treatment. Why are we making this exception for this child? Why is this what is motivating us to give temporary residency here for Congress to go into session in order to address this? I mean, this is just horrific. It's horrific that Congress would do such a thing. I mean, if Congress wants to pass a bill saying all the victims of socialized medicine in the world or in Great Britain or in Europe or whatever, If you want to come to the United States to get better treatment, we will give you a special visa that makes it easy for you to come into the United States to get special treatment. I'm all for that. That'll be great. Come over, get the treatment, pay for it here for everybody. But to pass a bill for one child, a child that actually probably will not be able to be helped by this treatment, and even if he is helped by this treatment, will stay crippled, and, 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 and cognitively deficient because his brain will never have developed enough. So he will never live a human life. But that's what these people want, I guess. That's what these altruists want. They want this kid to suffer. All right, we're going to take, uh, take a break to, to, and, and we'll come back. Uh, happy to get your calls. What do you think about that? I, I know what I'm saying is not very popular. What do you think about this Charlie God thing? 888-900-3393. You want to defend you want to defend Congress and the president for making a big deal out of this? 888-900-3393. What would you do with Charlie God? We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Ron Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, we're back, and we're talking about Charlie God, this this uh, poor kid, who um, who has a genetic disease that is basically uh, d- destroying him. It's eating him alive, and uh, basically he is going to be crippled for the rest of his life. He's no matter what the treatment does, he he is going to have an unfunctioning brain for the rest of his life. He's not going to be able to live as a human being. Now, look, I completely agree that it should be a hundred percent the parent's decision. If they have the money to pay for it, which they do, uh, and it shouldn't be a political issue. 
it shouldn't be up to the state to make these decisions. But you have socialist medicine. The state is making these decisions every single day. Why is this kid become the, the symbol, the, the, the thing that conservatives are latching onto to try to attack socialized medicine? This isn't the good example. The real example is every single day people are dying because of socialized medicine. Every single day people are denied choices because of socialized medicine. Every single day our system is collapsing, our healthcare system is collapsing more and more and more because, because of socialized medicine. So Charlie God is a bad example because there's no good outcome. It's not like under private health care there'd be a good outcome from this. If England had a private health care system, the parents would pay $1.3 million now, they've got $1.3 million, to keep them alive, basically as, as a vegetable, I guess, and, 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 and probably a suffering one. There'd be no positive outcome here, and he'd probably die. Yes, maybe they'd learn something by, by treating him. Maybe they'd learn something about medicine. But who the hell wants their kid to be a, a guinea pig of experimentation? when the chances of actual living a life as a human being are basically impossible. I agree completely that, with the point that it's not. It should not be the government. It should not be the hospital making these decisions. In, in a private healthcare system, it wouldn't be. This is clearly a, you know, a horrific one example of millions of examples of why socialized medicine is so, so bad. You have you know, what do you call it? Death councils, death committees who decide who lives and who dies. But it's, this isn't the example. And why, again, why is our president getting involved? Why isn't he, why isn't he denouncing socialized medicine every single day? Why denouncing it only with Charlie God? And he's, he didn't really denounce socialized medicine when he came out to show his caring about Charlie. Why, why is Congress getting involved? If socialized medicine is so bad, first of all, Congress could repeal Obamacare. That would be good. It could repeal Medicare. That would be good. Those are socialized medicine programs. Let's not become England. That's good. But again, this child is not an example, a good example of the true evils of, of socialized medicine. Uh, I think he's, he's being used. He's being used but primarily by, by uh, elements of the religious right all over the place. He's being used. And, and look, the protesters outside this hospital uh, giving death threats to hospital administrators, giving death threats to uh, nurses and doctors, disrupting the functioning of the hospital. I mean, where were they when, again, hundreds of people every single day are suffering because of socialized medicine? They didn't care. But you give them one really, really suffering kid, one child who cannot live a normal life as a human being, and they go nuts. It, 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 it offends them suddenly. Why are you fighting for this life and not the lives of normal people, not the lives of healthy people? It, 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 it's sad, right? It's sad. And we're not fighting for his life. They're fighting for his life to keep him alive. It reminds me of the Tibby Shivo case. You remember the Tibby Shivo case years and years ago in Florida? She was basically had been on life support for, I think, a couple of years, and her husband wanted to unplug her. She was brain dead. She was completely dead. There was nothing there, and he wanted to unplug her. And the, 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 um, the, her parents didn't want it. And they actually passed a law in the Florida legislature that just applied to Terry Schiavo. Why just, you know, because in the name of the right to life, quote. What life? What life? You're a vegetable. What life? Disconnect it. Let them die with dignity. Let, let, let it end. I mean, it, it's tragic. It's sad anytime children die. But it is what it is. Ah, sad, sad note. All right. You know, what we hear in the owner books are for freedom. We're for human flourishing. We're for individual human flourishing. And the only system that provides that is freedom. And in healthcare, that freedom is necessary across the board. All right, you've been listening to another show, the Yaron Brook Show. We're on the Blaze Radio Network. See you next week.